It's August 12th, 2024. Do you know who your president is? Do you know who your president is? Sure, the answer to that question officially is Joe Biden, but we know that was never quite true. Many of you have always known that. However, since this disastrous performance at the debate against Donald Trump 46 days ago and his removal from the campaign 22 days ago, everyone has known our president is not Joe Biden. This is no small matter and no joke. The U.S. is still the world's number one superpower, and we literally don't know who's in charge right now. Even Biden himself doesn't seem to know, or at least he doesn't want to say it very clearly. But here he is finally touching on this in a Sunday interview. Listen to this. Look, um, the polls we had showed that it was neck and neck race. would have been down to the wire. But what happened was uh, a number of my Democratic colleagues in the House and Senate thought that I was going to hurt them in the races. And I was concerned if I stayed in the race, that would be the topic. You be interviewing about why did Nancy Pelosi say, why did so, and, uh, and I thought it would be a real distraction. Yeah. So Nancy Pelosi and others, he finally admits, tossed him out. It tells us something about why he was ousted, or at least Biden's claim as to why. I believe it to be true. And he did mention Nancy by name, but we still don't know who made this decision. Who forced Joe to drop out of the race? Was it just Nancy? Was it Barack Obama? Who are the members of the cabal running the White House, and why won't they come forward? Even that same Nancy Pelosi is curious about who's actually in charge, or at least she's pretending to be. Listen to her in this interview, also from this weekend, as she fumbles around when she's talking about that weird letter Joe Biden allegedly signed that announced he was dropping out of the race. Here it is. I didn't accept a letter as anything but a letter. I mean, I mean, in another, there are some people who were unhappy with the letter. Let me say it different. Some said that some people were unhappy with the letter. I'll put it in somebody else's mouth. Because it was a, I don't even know, it didn't sound like Joe Biden to me. It really didn't. So, that, but. So what is that? What it, it didn't sound like Joe Biden? Is Pelosi lying? Is she serious? Is she ever going to get those bargain basement dentures of hers replaced? I mean, come on, she's almost a billionaire. We can't understand half what she's saying because her falls asleep. Her teeth are just slopping around in her mouth. Okay, but in all seriousness, who's making these decisions? This isn't a conspiracy theory. This is an actual conspiracy. Really, look up conspiracy in the dictionary. I did. The definition is a secret plan by a group to do something unlawful or harmful. Running the White House anonymously and without the support of the people is unlawful and harmful and it's being done by a group of people as the mangled words of Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi tell us. So it is a conspiracy and so far the conspirators are not even being held accountable for anything. It's actually being supported and ignored at the same time by the same Democrats who have been in a months long tizzy over their claims of Total unaccountability on the Supreme Court, for example. Here's Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez complaining about what she claims is Justice Samuel Alito's position on accountability. Listen to this whopper. Justice Alito's position is laughable in this. This idea that he can be and, and the, that the court should be accountable to nobody and that the only person that they should be accountable to are themselves. This kind of <laughs> scout's promise sort of uh, set up for how we should be uh, having ethics standards for the most, the highest and most consequential court in the land. It is completely unacceptable. And not only is it unacceptable, but to have any one of our co-equal branches be completely unaccountable to the others is paving the path to authoritarianism, tyranny, uh, the abuse of power in the United States, and it, it is structurally completely unsustainable. And so it is not a question on of if Congress has jurisdiction and power over the Supreme Court. It is what power are we going to exercise? Of course, AOC is lying, lying 
about what Justice Alito really said and apparently believes. The point is this. The same Democrats who want to attack the publicly known and vocal members of the Supreme Court and want to hold them more accountable are all okay with unnamed and private folks in charge of the presidency, unelected bureaucrats running the Oval Office and the White House. Now, there may be some of you who think, well, Biden is a lame duck president anyway. What does it matter? Well, it matters a lot when you have the U.S. military under your command and this little thing called the nuclear codes. Matters a hell of a lot. But it also matters because modern history shows that a number of crucial events occurred during the final or so-called lame duck period for an outgoing president. Barack Obama used his final year in office to really put the Iran nuclear deal into effect, put it in place, remember all that money on the tarmac? We're still paying for that mistake every single day. On a more admirable note, Bill Clinton used the year 2000 to work to try to get a real Israeli-Palestinian peace deal done. Didn't happen. But to this day, Clinton says he was betrayed by the Palestinians, who still refused to make peace, even after he gave them 95% of what they asked for. We're still dealing with that failure, even though he tried. Even though we seem to refuse to learn from it, go back further in history to 1960 when the Soviets shot down our U-2 spy plane. Outgoing President Dwight Eisenhower at first denied the whole thing, and then he had to admit he lied when Russia inconveniently produced the surviving U-2 pilot and the wreckage of his jet. The whole incident made the Cold War a lot more dangerous for three more decades. These are lame duck maneuvers. Can be dangerous, can be monumental. I'm going to share more of that when we come back. But I want you to consider this again. Who is the president of the United States as we sit here right now? If something happened right now, at this moment, who is the president of the United States? You don't have an answer. Because you don't know. We don't know. We can speculate as to who's running things. This power play. Take a break. Think about that. Kicking off a brand new week, it's the Steve Gruber Show. Make you sure you go to stevegruber.com. Send me an email if you've got questions or comments. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Getter. Follow me on Truth Social. Follow me on Facebook and Rumble. I look forward to it.